All right, YouTube, lots of goofy stuff going on in the U.S. election right now. You see, both parties are falling apart completely. It's actually funny to watch. You know, when, you're when you generally support third party and independent functions and you really, you don't give a crap anymore really what the Republicans do. You don't really give a crap what the Democrats do. When you've suffered through the W years and the fucking Obama years, at that point, it just becomes a shit fest within D.C. And you say, oh, why do these people keep getting reelected? By the way, John McCain uh, might indeed lose. Paul Ryan might be out. I'm not fucking surprised, by the way. It doesn't even matter whether they're challenged from within their own party or whether they get outed by the other party. It really doesn't even matter. And that's the case for a good 90 percent of everybody in Congress. That's the case for a good 90 percent of all the governors, all the senators, all the representatives, everybody within the two-party system because they're all a bunch of idiots they don't really know how to govern they don't really know what they're doing no, they don't care about the country at this point the republican and democratic parties are corporations at this point they're money-making schemes they don't really care about ideology the rnc would put a picture of general mao saying kill all white people on their website if they thought that it would get them more money and more votes the DNC would put a picture of Hitler on their website and say, Sieg Heil, we're, we're the National Socialist Democrats now, if they thought it would get them more money and more votes. I've lost all respect for the two parties. <clears throat> Increasingly, other Americans have. There's a reason why Johnson is polling in double digits right now. There's a reason this is happening. The paradigm shift has actually gone beyond what I expected. Now, I was optimistic about cha actual change, not the fake change of Obama, oh, change we can believe in. Or, or any of that bullshit, but real change going forward. I was optimistic that one or both of the parties would have some degree of reform going on. Uh, however, I was not particularly optimistic about the chances of a third party actually breaking through the threshold to end up into the na in the national debate, to end up on all 50 states on the ballot. And it looks like that might actually happen, especially at this point, it almost doesn't matter who the two parties nominate. They've attacked themselves so much. Uh, that it really it doesn't matter if Bernie Sanders becomes the Democratic nominee all the over 40 Democrats who still 99 percent of them think badly about socialism which I agree with but let's face it uh, the, the younger Democrats don't I'm not gonna vote for Bernie Sanders and if they pick Hillary Clinton all the under 40 Democrats who think that Hillary Clinton is just a relic of a past era, she's basically fossilized, they're not going to get behind Hillary Clinton. A lot of them have already pledged not to. It doesn't even matter who the Republican nominee is. On the Republican side, it's the same thing. If Trump's the nominee, there are a substantial number of Republicans, not not 60%, certainly, but there are substantial, a double-digit total of Republicans will not vote for him. If Trump is not the nominee, a good proportion, probably about a quarter of the Republican Party, um, you have to realize that the 33 percent they're really really solidly on board with him a lot of those people are not partisan Republicans but I'd say about maybe 20 25 percent of the Republican Party will jump ship they would follow him to an independent campaign if he chooses not to campaign he's certainly not going to endorse anyone at this point considering what the RNC's done they jump to a third party the two-party system is dying I'm enjoying watching it but right now there's even more shit going on now uh, you saw with hillary clinton saying that the bernie sanders campaign should pay her to participate in a bait with him what fucking planet is this crazy old woman living on that she thinks that that's gonna gonna fly with the majority of democrats even people that were tacitly in support of hillary is inevitable are currently jumping onto the sanders bus at this point and he's now pulling ahead of her now i've said it would be extremely difficult at this point, almost impossible for Bernie Sanders to pick up enough delegates to actually win against Hillary Clinton. She would have to spectacularly underperform from here on out during the entire rest of the race in order for her to lose the nomination. I still believe she will be the nominee. But she's going to look a hell of a lot weaker than she would have if, if she hadn't pulled the Clintonian shenanigans against somebody who at first didn't even want to attack her and wanted to be buddy-buddy with her and just talk about socialism, she'd probably be in a much stronger position. Instead, she starts losing state after state, 
and she's in danger in states where she thought that she would be, you know, well ahead. She thought she'd never have a fucking problem. She said, well, look at who my opponent is. He's old. He's a socialist. He's woefully out of touch. And I'll say this for the Democrats, even even for the younger Democrats, here's what gives Hillary at least a small chunk of them is the gun control debate. She's all, well, fuck the Second Amendment. He's more like, well, you know, I come from a, a state where people hunt a lot, so I'm not necessarily on board with the Brady Bill or whatever. Um, so at this point, the DNC is really destroying itself. Um, the DNC, I say specifically because Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who's the head of the DNC, is a former Hillary staffer, and people are starting to notice how screwy the superdelegate system is on the Democrat in the Democratic Party. It's screwy. It doesn't make any sense. Nobody can understand it. Nobody understands why it's in place in the first place. And so politically literate younger Democrats are pissed off. On the Republican side, you saw, of course, Trump came out and said, well, there's, there's got to be punishment for women who have abortions. Now, I would like to again show you what this really says. It, it sounds terrible, and it's not going to do him any fucking favors. I, I don't know what he was thinking, because most of the states going forward are more secular than the states that have already voted. Other than places like fucking Nebraska and Montana, I have to assume that his, his, with his campaign manager being in a jail cell or whatever right now, which that's undeserved. Uh, he did not assault Michelle Fields in any way, shape, or form. It's not battery. Hate to tell you this, no, the, the charges will not stick. And the prosecutor has been outed as a vocal uh, supporter of Hillary Clinton. Hmm, I wonder why he decided to bring the charges forward. They won't stick. But it's not, I, I don't know what world he's living in where he thought that this would be a good idea. It, now is the time that he should be softening his tone on such things, just ignoring the sort of wedge issues, the evangelism and so forth. Look at the states that are coming up, New York, Connecticut, Delaware, New Jersey. He needs these northeastern states in order to be competitive. The Pennsylvanians care about jobs. They don't give a fuck about abortion. Maybe, maybe people in Wisconsin do. Ultimately, though, Lakes Region, it's about jobs. So I have to assume that he's kind of a little bit off put right now by what's happening to his old campaign manager. I believe he brought someone else on board temporarily to fill the gap but they're going to have to do some backpedaling. But I will tell you fundamentally what he actually said. At no time did he say, oh, I'm going to make, I'm going to make an attempt to outlaw abortion. He did the same thing that he did prior with the wall. What did he do? Swing big and then pull back. The wall will be built by Mexico, remember. And everyone said it can't be done, that's crazy, you're a bigot, you're a racist, whatever. And then he said, oh, yeah, we're going to pay for it by taxing imports from Mexico. See, it's just a business tax. It had nothing to the the lowbrow heard what they wanted to hear, which is Trump is going to aim artillery pieces across the border and threaten them if they don't uh, ship a trainload of pesos. What he's done here is is maneuver himself into a position where all the evangelicals here, Trump is going to ban abortion. Now, if they had any common sense, they'd realize Roe v. Wade is a Supreme Court decision. The executive branch, even working with the legislature, can't do jack shit about that. Without the Supreme Court, it wouldn't even matter what justices were on it, striking it back down. He's not going to do jack shit. What did he actually say? Well, there have got to be punishments if it's illegal. See, they heard what they wanted to hear, and the left heard what it wanted to hear, and they're currently attacking him for this. When did he say he was actually going to outlaw it? He's not. He's not going to do, he's, I hate to tell you, to those that support Trump and are on the alt-right, you're not going to get any anti-abortion measures from Donald Trump. This is one thing that Cruz is fundamentally right about, and, and think about it, Cruz is a complete idiot who has mismanaged his campaign continuously into the ground, who doesn't really know what he's doing, who's running an outdated Hillary Clinton 90s style TV sort of campaign as opposed to the social media campaigns of Trump or Sanders, or even to some extent Kasich. Kasich, honestly, is ahead of Cruz also right now in Wisconsin for a very good reason. Um, think about it. Cruz is a complete moron, probably cheated on his wife numerous times is a reason why she's uh, canceled all of her fucking events that she was going to come to because she doesn't want to answer those questions because she knows she'll be sweating when she does. Um, he's fundamentally right. Donald Trump is not particularly conservative on this issue. Conservative. As though that fucking means anything. See, Ted Cruz, uh, he, he pretends to care a lot about evangelism. He, too, probably wouldn't do jack shit about it. He's further right 
maybe when it comes to certain types of taxes and certainly when it comes to Israel, when it comes to, yes, we should go to war with this state and that state. At the end of the day, Trump came and and Trump did lie, by the way, when he or I shouldn't say not necessarily lie. He said, well, I can't recall even being asked about this. Well, you were Mr. Trump. You were asked in the mid-1990s what you felt about abortion, said you didn't give a fuck about it. So he's not going to do shit about it. He doesn't care whether you have an abortion. The only thing he would be likely to do is put a regulatory fee on it and siphon some money from you, honestly. Uh, he's not going to do... He's going to... Su he'll support Planned Parenthood. He'll conveniently take leave of the issue, and he'll focus on the border and taxes and things like that. He doesn't give a fuck. NATO. You see uh, what he said about NATO. Now, I happen to agree. I don't think he'll actually do this. I think this is another example of his negotiating tactics. No, I do believe that it's time to completely overhaul the way NATO works. The Western European countries especially have been dragging their heels for far too long. They contribute very little. No one's asking the Polish or the Turks or some of these you know, second-tier economies to, to pull, you know, a significant amount more weight. Nobody's asking them to do that. But the Germans, fuck yes. Triple the amount that they have to put into NATO. The British, hell yes. The French, hell yes. The British and the French, uh, the UK and France are nuclear states. There's no reason that they can't contribute more. Germany is one of the largest economies on Earth. They contribute relatively little. There's no reason for this. Now, when Trump takes aim at Latin America or Asia, our allies there, they, they do. In, in fact, they want to do more. I would think that the Europeans looking at Russia right now would be more like Japan or South Korea that want to build more weapon systems, scrap pacifistic doctrines, and defend themselves more ably. Why are the Asians willing to do that? In fact, begging us to hold back and let them build more weapons and and asking us for more weapons saying we'll pay you we, we want these anti-missile systems we want these anti-air systems please sell them to us by the way japan wants nukes south korea kind of wants nukes let them have them who fucking cares at this point nuclear proliferation is going to happen anyway we might as well make sure that our allies have them first we might as well just give nukes to every fucking state in this world nato is outdated because NATO was built to, to tackle a symmetric, singular force with a sphere around it. The, the specifically, the Soviet Union, that sphere no longer exists. Half of those states pathologically hate the Russians. Russia's a shell of its former self. Meanwhile, the Russians, the one strength that they have, and they're still kind of the main competitor, is to fund proxy wars. Well, you know, uh, what good do these nuclear weapons systems and this, this top-heavy interventionism of the U.S. do in this field? All we do is fuck our economy over and over. Now the Europeans could pay a little bit more. I think that's perfectly fair. By the way, anyone that thinks, well, the Europeans will be scared if the United States withdraws so much as a penny of its uh, funding of NATO and, or one bullet or one person put on one border... If they're that scared, let them pay more for their military budgets. Let them pull their own weight. If they're that scared, they should have no problem with increasing their, their defense spending from 1% of GDP to 1.5% in some cases with these states. They should have no fucking problem with it. So no, I, I fundamentally agree with that on NATO. It's a bullshit uh, sort of setup. Uh, the Mutual Defense Treaty of the Americas works fine. Our treaties with East Asia work just fine. All of our other military treaties work just perfectly, but NATO, the, it's supposed to be the most important of all, is basically 30 years outdated at this point. It, do, it doesn't make any sense anymore, the specific way in which it's been built. By the way, yeah, let more nations into NATO. That's just fine. Yes, we should have a larger, more expansive alliance. Yeah, we should probably ask the Egyptians to join NATO. I see no problem with that. Ask the Moroccans to join, ask the Tunisians. Why not? You know, it just means more people contributing, more defense. It means a, a more stable alliance, all things considered. You know, it's not like anybody's attacked the Moroccans lately, other than, you know, other Moroccans that happen to be terrorists or something. So, yeah, let them in. Who gives a fuck? Morocco, by the way, was our first real uh, ally in the entire world. The first ally of the United States was the Moroccans. Look up the U.S.-Moroccan Treaty of Friendship if you don't believe me.
interesting little piece of history that you know 99 percent of the population doesn't know but yeah things are falling apart you've got you've got hillary looking like a total bitch to you know anyone who knows what they're doing in the world you know it's not just republicans saying well this is kind of stupid that she said this you've got sanders saying basically the same thing along with his fans even a lot of hillary's fans are like i'm not sure at this point what she's talking about then you've got sanders i find it funny the left uh again like my last video the left usually takes a more secular line yet a sparrow you know jumps down onto bernie sanders podium and all of a sudden the, the crowd's in uproar and it must be a divine sign from jesus or something give me a break folks that's a cult of personality bullshit and you know it uh you know better yeah okay it's kind of cute yeah he, he looked at the bird and he had a very boyish looking smile on his face okay that's fine yeah, he didn't rip the bird's head off and squeeze the blood into his mouth like you might expect from a corporate banker or something like that. Uh, you know, that's, um, it doesn't really matter. Ted Cruz with his affair. I hate to say it, folks, I have a feeling that affair is real, at least in part, because I have a feeling he probably, he's a constitutional lawyer. He would have filed a suit already against the Inquirer. They've doubled down on it. Now they're talking about there might be a sex video or something. I can believe it, honestly. I can actually believe that. Uh, <laughs> without holding back, I can say, yeah, that sounds like something that Ted Cruz would do. He seems like the kind of person who would be into that. Kasich is a non-issue. I'm not sure why he's even in. By the way, Cruz and Trump, they come out and they say, oh, I wish Kasich would drop out of the race because we'd be so much further ahead. You're, neither of you are, are reading it correctly. Kasich's fans are the ones that really aren't on board that much with Cruz or Trump. If Kasich were to drop out, you would expect a basically a 50-50 split. Because some of them like a quieter candidate. They, they came over from Rubio when he dropped out. Trump absorbed most of the Rubio fans that cared about electability. Then Rubio dropped out after you know most of his support was gone. The rest mostly went to Kasich. So half of his support is comprised of people who like him because he's kind of quiet. And the other half kind of like him because he's he's more center of the road. He's not far right. Well, if they like if they don't like the far right, they're not going to support Cruz. They'll go over to Trump. And if they like someone who's quiet, Cruz is arguably a little bit more quiet than Trump is on a more personal level. So it won't change the dynamics of the race. Kasich is a non-issue at this point. People should pretend he doesn't even exist if they know what's good for them when they're out campaigning. And then you have Trump stirring the pot with his abortion comments, which I can see through them. I know he's not going to do jack shit about abortion in this country. He's not going to do fucking anything. He's not going to pass a law against abortion. He's not stupid enough to pass a law against abortion. You think he wants to give his enemies a bunch of fodder to use against him to get another partisan election going when he's doing so well in an election that has gone past partisan politics? Fuck no. He's not going to touch that issue. It's a hot potato. He's not going to get within a mile of the issue of abortion if he's actually nominated. In the general, he'll say basically nothing about it. He'll tip his hat to the evangelical, say, yeah, I'm an evangelical like you. I believe in Jesus Christ. Then if he gets elected, he's not going to do jack shit. The same is with gay marriage. Oh, I believe in traditional marriage. You didn't seem to care back in the 90s. You know, you. I would find it difficult to believe that you can formulate a negotiated response. As opposed to abortion, yes, you can make a case for that because most of the Republicans are still against it. But on gay marriage, increasingly, they don't care. I, I would find it, I think it would be hard for Trump to specifically say what triggered his change from believing in gay rights, fundamentally, and not giving a fuck, to, yeah, now I believe in traditional marriage. And you know, that's manipulation in a way, too. He says, I believe in traditional marriage, and he tries not to talk about it any further because what he really means is, yeah, I happen to be straight. Most of the people I know are straight, but I don't really give a fuck who marries. You know, he probably doesn't even, you know, look, he's, he's had several divorces. He obviously doesn't care too much about the, the concept of Christian sanctity of marriage in the generally evangelical sense. The, the way the evangelicals understand it, it's a sin if you, you know, put your finger in your wife's butt, I guess. Uh, most Christian, most of the rest of the Christians in the world don't. They don't really care what people do in their bedroom. They don't really care who's doing it to who, as long as it's consensual. They don't care if you have a fucking orgy. Hell, half of them probably have. The evangelicals, I'll tell you this: people who pretend with all their friends and family to be more religious are the freakiest people of all.
they're freaks. And the secularists are, are pretty bland, ultimately. I can tell you this from personal experience. You know, I was, I was married to somebody who was, you know, marginally a Catholic individual. It wasn't a Catholic wedding, which is the funniest part. It's like, oh, sorry, Pope. You don't have a piece of paperwork in the Vatican about this. They don't give a fuck. Even most of the Republicans at this point, especially the younger Republicans, they're not really feeling the Cruz missile. They're, they're not feeling Cruz's missile, you know, like uh, Katrina Pearson supposedly did or, or this Carpenter woman. No, they're, they're riding the Trump train largely. They don't really care about the issue of gay rights. So when Trump comes out and says this, he's just trying to fire up the evangelicals in Wisconsin before an important vote, and he will walk it back. Trust me. Trust me when I say this. He won't walk it back yet. After Wisconsin is done, he will walk it back before New York because he wants more support there. Specifically, he wants to get over 50, which he probably, I mean, even if he doesn't, even if he came out and, and literally shot somebody, he'd probably win New York with more than 50%. Um, he'll, he'll walk it back before New York, trust me. That's, what, that's my prediction. Watch, wait and see. Does Trump walk back his uh, remarks on abortion in any way, shape, or form before New York goes out to vote? I bet he does. If not New York, certainly the next slew of northeastern states. I think it's uh, Maryland and Delaware, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Pennsylvania. Well, in none of these states is religion particularly important in the urban centers of these states. There'd be no reason for him to maintain such a line of reasoning. And you can watch. People will hyperanalyze this, and they'll say, oh, well, he's just a bigot. He hates women. And then when he walks it back, no harm done. Nobody cares. The censors will say, oh, that's what he meant. And I'll be sitting here chuckling because I told you that's what it meant. He, he never said, I will outlaw abortion. He knows he can't. The court's already ruled on this, folks. He'd be more likely to support a constitutional convention enshrining it in law than he would banning it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it does come off as bullshit, you know, to somebody who's gotten used to the fact that Trump has this tendency. I can see right through it. A lot of people, more emotionally involved people can't. But from a third party looking into the two-party system that's currently strangulating itself, I can see what he's doing. It's masterful. I mean, props to Trump for being smart enough to pull this off. Uh, you're tricking a good third of the GOP into thinking that you're far right every time you say one of these things. And then when you walk it back, the centrists come right back on board. It's a masterful strategy. He's completely outmaneuvering Cruz and Kasich. That doesn't mean he's actually going to do jack shit about abortion, trust me. He wouldn't, do, he wouldn't lift a hand to stop abortions in this country. Um, you know, maybe if someone paid him a billion dollars to do it, he'd have difficulty uh, negotiating his way through that. But even then, I doubt he would do it. At this point, he doesn't give a fuck about money, I think. Um, he's cementing his legacy. By the way, I will say this. The only way in which Trump, who is a complete egotist, admittedly, can feed his ego as U.S. president is to be remembered as a good president. That's how he will govern. He is going to try to get on people's good sides, and the best way to do that is, honestly, to fix a lot of the perceived problems we have in this country. It's not even necessarily populism. It's pragmatism. Uh, I would argue, again, that level of reform, while it would have worked a decade ago, is no longer sufficient to address the concerns of the nation because it has gone to seed for so long. W and Obama collectively have utterly wiped out our economy. They've utterly fucked our military. They've fucked our reputation overseas. They've screwed everything up. I mean, they've turned it in just two administrations. We've gone from generally feeling safe to constantly being told we need to be frightened and we need more surveillance and we need more militarized police. Uh, we've practically got a race war going on at this point in this country or, or something just shy of that. It only took two administrations to do that. Only two administrations. I think it would take either severe, it would take a long-term effort at the kind of reform he's talking about, or, or Sanders is talking about on a social level. Fiscally, he's, you know, he's got no clue what he's talking about. His fiscal policies would crush our economy even worse. Socially, yeah, the, some of his social views might work, you know, and the drug war, that's great. Um, it would take a long time of consistent slower reform to actually positively affect our country. I jumped ship. I can no longer vote for the Republicans or the Democrats in the general. I need to vote for the Libertarian Party. 
Uh, every little bit helps. I don't care if people class it as a wasted vote. The only wasted vote would be if I'm voting for some idiot like Hillary Clinton or Ted Cruz. Trump is arguably better, but at the same time, his style of reform, while commendable, while it would have worked if Obama had never been elected or if he had failed at re-election, is no longer sufficient to address the concerns we face as a nation. There's too much militarism, there's too much police state, there are too many terrorists, there are too many problems going on in Europe, there are too many problems going on everywhere else. Uh, I don't think that either party, even a complete charismatic tyrant who is capable of utterly debilitating Congress and getting their way past, and who is also benevolent enough to do that without fucking with everything. Even somebody like that would have grave difficulties in reforming the system that we use now enough to balance the economy, to stop terrorist attacks while also getting rid of the police state and the surveillance apparatus that blatantly violates the U.S. Constitution. I no longer have faith in the two-party system to do that. So yeah, I'll be voting for Gary Johnson. For those of you voting for Trump, um, there are better choices, but at least you're voting for the best person from the two-party system. Um, I guess that's some consolation. I still expect him to be the next president. I just think it's too little too late. Uh, he'll, he'll be sort of like Reagan. Well, you know, Reagan would have grave difficulties. If you could revive Ronald Reagan and vote for him and got him into office, he'd have great difficulties at reforming the system that we're currently using enough. Uh, to really make a difference. You, need, you, need, you don't need a, a good president like Reagan, and I would class him as a good president, not a great president. You would need a great president like Teddy Roosevelt or an outstanding president. You need a George Washington or a Thomas Jefferson really to truly fix the system, and you'd also need them to have many allies in Congress. Uh, third party takeover at this point is about the best thing that we can hope for, and we can hope that that third party remains true to its principles. That's about all. Peace out.